welcome to today's On This Day in Tudor History with me, Claire Ridgway, author of On This Day in Tudor History. Now, where am I taking you today and is it going to be something good or something bad? Let's see. On this day in Tudor history, the 30th of October, 1485, so right at the start of the Tudor period, Henry Tudor, second Earl of Richmond and son of Lady Margaret Beaufort and the late Edmund Tudor, first Earl of Richmond, he was crowned King Henry VII. Now, Henry had, of course, become king after his forces defeated those of King Richard III at the Battle of Bosworth on the 22nd of August, 1485. And the bells are obviously ringing out for that victory or perhaps the demise of King Richard III. I'm not quite sure. Henry's coronation celebrations um, had begun on the 28th of October when he travelled to the Tower of London, which was the traditional place for the monarch uh, to spend a night uh, before their coronation, and he stayed there. Historian Leander Delisle uh, described in an article for Tudor Life magazine how the next day, the 29th of October, Henry processed through the streets of London from the tower to Westminster. He processed behind heralds, sergeants of arms, trumpeters, esquires, the mayor, aldermen and noblemen. England's new king was dressed in a purple velvet gown furred with ermine and he rode under a canopy fringed with 28 ounces of gold and silk carried by four knights on foot. Behind him rode his uncle Jasper Tudor and also John de la Pole, Duke of Suffolk. Henry was crowned king the next day, on this day in Tudor history, at Westminster Abbey. The abbey being hung with scarlet, which was a fine and very expensive woolen cloth. Chronicler Edward Hall recorded... After this, he with great pomp was conveyed to Westminster and there the 30 day of October was with all ceremonies accustomed, anointed and crowned king by the whole ascent as well of the commons as of the nobility and was named King Henry VII of that name, which was in the year of our redemption, 1485. Frederick III, then being Emperor of Almain, Maximilian, his son, then being newly elected King of the Romans, Charles VIII, reigning over the French nation, and James III, ruling the realm of Scotland. Which kingdom he obtained and enjoyed as a thing by God elected and provided, and by his especial favour and gracious aspect compassed and achieved, insomuch that men commonly report that 797 years past, it was by a heavenly voice revealed to Cadwallader, last king of Britons, that his stock and his progeny should reign in this land and bear dominion again. Whereupon most men were persuaded in their own opinion that by this heavenly voice he was provided and ordained long before to enjoy and obtain this kingdom, which thing King Henry VI did also show before, as you have heard declared. So there it's being said that, uh, you know, this had been prophesied and that King Henry VII had been chosen, especially by God, to be king. It was God's uh, will. John Fisher, Bishop of Rochester and confessor and chaplain to Henry VII's mother, Lady Margaret Beaufort, wrote of Margaret's reaction to her son's coronation. For when the king, her son, was crowned in all that great triumph and glory, she wept marvellously. And it's no wonder, for according to Henry VII's biographer, Thomas Penn, Henry's coronation was when Henry and Margaret were reunited after 14 years of separation, because, of course, Henry had been in exile. It must have been such an emotional day for them both, but such a day of victory too. So something good happened, I think, on this day in Tudor history. The very first king of the Tudor dynasty was crowned at Westminster Abbey in 1485.
Thank you for joining me. Uh, you can rest assured that I will be back tomorrow with another Tudor goodie for you. But please do subscribe to my YouTube channel by clicking around about there. That would be lovely if you did that. You can hit the bell to be notified as videos go live. And you can, of course, give me a like too. Thank you. See you soon. Bye bye.